Colonel Townsend Whelan said, only accurate rifles are interesting. Well, y'all, I'm going to promise you, if he was around and had a chance to shoot this rifle, he would certainly have found it interesting. Hey, y'all, it's Hunter Elliott with RangeOut.com. Hope y'all are doing well. This afternoon, I'm finalizing the, the part two, I guess, kind of part two of this Remington Model 700 VSF in 220 Swift. Hashtag long live the 220 Swift. If you look back, uh, it was a few weeks ago, I did a review on how to break in a, a rifle barrel, specifically a, a match grade rifle barrel, and I'll include a link to that review in the description of the video. However, this portion is, we're gonna talk about this rifle specifically and what I have been able to learn and some opinions I have formed on this particular rifle and specifically the caliber 220 Swift. First thing I want to get out of the way real quick is let's just go over some of the specifics on this particular rifle. The overall length is 45 and three quarter inches and the weight is about eight and a half pounds. It does have a 26 inch 416 stainless steel match grade barrel and it is nicely fluted. The fluting adds a couple different aspects. It increases the rifle barrel surface area so it can dissipate heat a little better and it does add a little bit more rigidity to it. A lot of y'all are probably going, yep, yeah, Remington Model 700, that's, that's a nice rifle, the VSF. That's their varmint high-end bolt action rifle line. The Remington Model 700 is, is kind of like the industry standard on which a lot of really accurate custom rifles are built. But then you probably scratch your hair going, well damn Hunter, why are you bothering reviewing one in 220 Swift? There are almost weekly something new and cool and innovative is coming out in the way of rifle cartridge. And it captures the public's attention and all the gun riders gush over it and completely get on board, which is fine. Hey, I think that's great. But I think a lot gets lost in what was great way back when. It's still great now and maybe even a little better than what we've got now. And the 220 Swift is an example of a cartridge that is, is almost being lost to history. And that's a damn shame. The 220 Swift began its life around 1934, and it was released to the public in 1935. It is based off of a six millimeter Lee Navy case, cut down to 22 caliber, or cut down neck size to 22 caliber. It was the first production commercially available rifle cartridge to break the 4,000 feet a second barrier, and it still today holds the world record shooting a 29 grain bullet at 4,665 feet a second for fastest velocity from a commercial, commercially available caliber. All that was really cool in 1935. All that still stands today, has not been beat. So the 220 Swift is, yes, still the king of speed. And that's pretty cool. Okay, Hunter, well, yeah, it is the king of speed, but the reason it began to fall out of favor is because it was notoriously hard on barrels. Yes, admittedly, that is 100% correct in 1935, 1940, 1950. However, metallurgy has come a long way, y'all, since the 30s and 40s, as has powder development. And so there are a lot of things you can do to mitigate that, that throat erosion, that barrel erosion, that, that barrel burner moniker that the 220 Swift was labeled with which now isn't quite as applicable as it was way back when. Breaking them in a barrel correctly. You break the barrel incorrectly, you're gonna add a lot of barrel life to it. You wanna clean the rifle barrel. You know, every, every 15, 20 rounds, you know, cl clean it. I mean, this isn't a rifle, this is, this is a bolt action rifle, so you're not gonna be out there just emptying mag after mag having fun, which we all agree that's a lot of fun. But this is one of those rifles that you get behind, you get comfortable, you spend a day with it, and you go out and you shoot, it, punch a paper. You may go out, take it varmint hunting or whatever, and, and shoot a, a hundred rounds. Don't get it too hot. Don't shoot that thing so hot that you can't hardly even touch the stock. Y'all, this really is going to apply to any rifle because regardless of what it is, barrels erode. And so this information is, is good for any rifle. The 220 Swift is an inherently accurate cartridge. Some say more so than the 22 250. Myself as well, that it is a longer, smaller case. And so you've got that powder charge laying in the bottom of that case. That powder has more surface area exposed to that primer ignition, which generally is more conducive to a complete and more consistent even powder burn, which is gonna give you more consistent velocities, which should give you more consistent accuracy results. Now, your mileage may, may vary, but I've talked to some guys that were shooters of the Swift way back into 30s and 40s, and this is information that they're telling me, as well as talking to some people that are into you know, the ultra velocity. If you're a hand loader, or if you're buying factory ammunition, if you keep your velocity under about 3,800 foot a second, 
it's gonna really, really keep the barrel erosion down. And now everybody's going, well, well Hunter, if we're gonna shoot under 3,800 foot a second, why not buy the, the 22250 or the 223 or what have you? Here's the deal. You go out and you buy your brand new Ferrari or Lamborghini, and I'm talking out of my pay grade here, but just work with me, it's a pretty decent analogy. When you're driving around town, you're not hammering that car all the time, but the horsepower is there when you want it. So if you're just gonna go out one day and have fun with your rifle and punch paper, download that to, to 36, 3,700 feet a second. You're gonna have a good time, it's gonna be fine. But when you want that horsepower, when you want that case capacity to push past that 4,000 feet a second mark, well, there you go. You've got the potential. And you're not hurting anything by downloading the cartridge. You're stretching your powder a little bit longer. You're, you're cutting down on barrel erosion, that sort of stuff. Recoil-wise, the 220 Swift, no, not bad at all, especially an eight and a half pound rifle. So don't let that scare you because it is not near as important as it was way back when. So now that we got done with that, let's talk about the 220 Swift. Velocity wise, the only thing that I was able to find that was, was getting close to matching it is the 223 Winchester Super Short Magnum, which depending on what manual and what information you looked at, it was right at 220 Swift velocity. Some manuals said it was even a little faster. Some manuals said the Swift had the advantage. So it really depends on where you get your information from. But average wise, they are pretty tit for tat. The 223 Winchester Super Short Magnum is right now still a notorious barrel burner because it is a super short fat cartridge. And so really where you get your barrel erosion from is when that primer ignites that powder charge, you know, you got the bullet passing down the bore. Well, obviously not all that propellant has been burned. And so a lot of that is chasing that bullet down the bore. And that unburned powder is abrasive. But with the, with the Swift, with being a longer, smaller around cartridge, remember we talked about, it's going to be a little bit more conducive to even consistent powder burn. Where the 223 Winchester Super Short Magnum, not so much. Some of the manuals that I read were talking about when you were achieving swift velocities, they were burning barrels out in, you know, 400 rounds. With the Swift, if you take care of it, you know, you could get three or four, 5,000 rounds out of it easy. The 223 Winchester Super Short Magnum is a contender on paper. Practicality, who wants to rebarrel their rifle every 500 rounds? One thing, too, that I think is really the feather in the cap of the Swift is cool points. It's just cool. It's a cartridge from 1934 that holds the world's record for the fastest commercially available cartridge. Man, that's cool. I took this thing out to the range and I was shooting it and we had guys like, what is, what is, that's a nice rifle, what's the chamber then? 220 Swift. Some of the older guys were like, oh, that is so cool. I remember when I had a, a Winchester Model 64 in 1952 chambered in Swift and we would go out and shoot groundhogs and, and, and prairie dogs at five, six, seven, 800 yards, which it'll do. Or some of the younger guys were like, the 220 Swift, is that brand new? <laughs> Make a, a short story long, my buddy Chad and I, you know Chad, he's been in a bunch of my reviews, he's running the camera right now. We went into Cabela's, man. Big box store, right, you know, to, to get some ammunition. Now, Hornaday and Remington both sent me test ammo, but y'all know that I like to use five or six different types of ammunition in my reviews. So I'm like, you know, Cabela's, they're gonna have some Swift to be sure. So we walked in there and we're looking around and I found one of these guys in the, in the, in the brown schmuck. I did not say schmuck. The brown schmuck. And he was an older guy and I'm like, oh, to be sure this guy's gonna know. So I'm like, hey man, uh, can you help me out? He goes, yeah, what are you looking for? I'm like, I'm looking for some 220 Swift. And the guy looks at me and goes, is that a new cartridge? Cause I don't think we've got any. And I thought, well, damn, you know, there's, there's something going on here. There's a disconnect. So anyway, with that said, let's talk about the rifle. Let's talk about the rifle. This rifle, and we've got a couple hundred rounds to it so far of currently just a Hornaday and Remington stuff. Accuracy wise, factory ammo, it's a half MOA gun all day long as it sits here. You'll notice I did add some glass. This is a Leupold LRP VX3i. Eight and a half by 25 by 50. Make sure I got all that right. It's pretty standard as y'all were uh, used to seeing. It does have a four round internal box magazine and it does have a little button here you can mash. You could drop the four plate and you can see the spring of the follower. So if you had the gun loaded and at the end of the day you wanted to unload it, you can unload it like that. It's got your standard push type safety. 
back for safe, push for off. And so you can see the rifle is unloaded and I do have the bolt back so we know it's clear. It's a really nice rifle. I, I started looking for other nice rifles that I could maybe do some comparison to. Y'all, maybe your, your, your Google Foo is stronger than mine, but I'll be damned if I could find any other manufacturer producing a brand new rifle in 220 Swift. You, we don't want to let a cartridge like this just, just fade into oblivion because it's cool. And, and, and the, the 22 250 and all these inferior cartridges, the Swift paved the way for, for these hyper velocity 22 caliber varmint cartridges. So, if nothing more than just history, it's worth preserving. But then, it's a hell of a lot better cartridge and a, a lot of what's being marketed today is the new snake oil, the new perfect, awesome, you know, do anything, go anywhere cartridge. You've got something from the 30s that's just as good as what you can go and buy today. And like I said, in some cases, maybe more. Now, I realize that I'm kind of droning on a little bit. I apologize, but y'all, I've been putting a lot of effort and a lot of work into this. And I'm very excited about this rifle. My buddy, Larry Case with Guns and Cornbread, he's got on the bandwagon with hashtag long live the 220 Swift. And he's writing articles about Swift now. And he and I are kind of trying to tag team this thing and just bring back some recognition. So if you're looking for a pretty cool rifle, the Remington Model 700 is hard to beat. Everybody knows that. It's, it's, it's almost pointless to review this rifle because it's, it's already the reput reputation of this particular piece of equipment precedes itself. Look for something a little obscure. Look for something a little different. Make it a little cooler, you know? I mean, everybody's got a 22-250 and a 223 Remington and a 204 Ruger. Man, everybody's got that. You don't want to be like everybody else. You want to be the guy at the range with the cool rifle that's out shooting these cats. Chad and Candy both shot it. They're still printing, you know, three quarter, one inch groups at 100 yards. So we know this rifle is great. I took it out to 500 yards, me and Andrew Barnes, and we shot it at 500 yards and it was printing right around three inches, three and a quarter at 500 yards. So it's a true half MOA gun, as we know, all the way out to 500 yards. Technically, it would have to be 600 yards to make it a half MOA gun, three inches at 600 yards, but we shot a pretty several three three shot three inch groups at 500 yards so i'm going to call it raw hide on the half half inch moa half moa rifle so the next step of this rifle is i have an mdt chassis it's all aluminum chassis that's completely solid aluminum underneath the action we're going to install that hornaday sent me some dies Sierra Bullet sent me some bullets and we're gonna start reloading for this rifle. And we're gonna to begin to approve upon what's already really a good rifle. I mean, the factory trigger's breaking it just over three pounds. Generally factory triggers from rifles are horrible, but this is one of the higher end Model 700s. So it's got a pretty daggum decent trigger in it from the factory. But we're gonna make some improvements. We're gonna make some changes. We're gonna add an aluminum chassis that's fully free floated. This stock is not fully free floated. It's, it's free floated from here to here, and then right here it's got two little pressure pads mashing against the barrel. And I talked to some of the old timers about that, and that's supposed to be one way that stock manufacturers controlled barrel harmonics to make them a little more um, consistent. Consistency equals accuracy. So it's working, but how's this rifle going to shoot with a free floater barrel on a better chassis? I'm not dogging the stock. It's a fine stock. It's a hunting stock, it's, it's a fine stock, but if we put something on there that's, that's built for a target rifle, it's gonna make it better. We're gonna hand load for it. And, and I got a pretty good idea of how to do some metallic cartridge hand loading for rifles. I've shot with guys that bench rested rifles, and I shot with a guy that used to shoot for real bench rest with a Swift. So I know enough about it to where I'm not gonna get myself in trouble. As long as I can at least get equal to, or hopefully a little better than what factory ammo does, we're going to see those results. So this is just part two. So once again, hashtag long live the 220 Swift. Hey y'all, you remember Candy Sugarman with the Gunpowder Gals? So she's been helping me a lot in some reviews and I talked her into going out to the 100 yard line with the Remington Model 700 VSF chambered in 220 Swift, a test gun we've been working on for a little while. Candy, you had some time with the gun. I did. Now, really, I need to preface this with the fact that I am not a rifle gal. Now, that doesn't mean I don't sh know how to shoot them. It's just that's not my preference. You know, give me a shotgun, give me pistols. I'll do that all day long. Rifles, not so much. 
but I do have to say that it was incredibly enjoyable to shoot this particular rifle. And you know, I had some great company. And I, what did I do, like one inch groups? Yeah, just under one inch at 100 yards. Which, I mean, for me, I was, I was more than thrilled. And I know I attribute a lot to this particular rifle. And that was with factory ammunition, not hand loads. That's right, so you know, I could probably do a lot better. That showcases not only the rifle's ability to shoot accurately, but yes. also your fundamentally understanding of running a rifle. Yes. So do you think that if you had a little bit more time with the gun, maybe you got a little more acclimatized to it, we could probably shrink those groups? Oh gosh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, so this is just the very beginning of the review. We've got a lot of changes coming to the rifle. Okay. We're gonna start reloading for it. And so there's gonna be a lot of changes. It's gonna be an ongoing thing. And so one of the things that I'm intending on doing is continually having Candy participate. So not only seeing things improve with the equipment, but maybe a little bit with her fundamentally understanding this particular rifle, because rifles are a lot like women. Oh boy. They are very <laughs> particular, uh -huh. and they can be a little moody. <laughs> oh, so you gotta gracious. spend a lot of time with them to get to know them so you know how to handle them. I'm gonna let that slide. Yay. <laughs> if you feel like there was anything that I kinda glossed over or went over too fast, there's always going to be an article on rangehot.com that you can go and jump to or reach out to me on social media. Let me know what you think, good, bad, right, or wrong, and I'll be glad to help you any way I can. So, with some work in progress. Whew, and I'm tired. Oh, hey, last thing. Check out my new table. Chad made that for me because he felt so bad for me. He, felt, he said, man, I feel sorry for that old rickety table you got, which, yeah, he was right. It sucked, but he spent his Sunday making some tables for me, and so... Uh, yeah, we appreciate that, Chad. So anyway, that's all I got, y'all. Once you take care of yourselves and each other, look forward to seeing you at the range.